Basketball has its sixth man, the unsung hero who comes off the bench to help his team to victory. Football has its twelfth man, an unseen but powerful energy that urges the home team forward. Now, Christianity has its thirteenth apostle, a faithful witness to the love, mercy, and truth of Jesus Christ. How about you? Will you be the thirteenth apostle? The Passion Play. About to begin, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of The 13th Apostle, where we explore the good, the beautiful, and the true of the Catholic faith and the Catholic Church. This is Tom Caffrey with my co-host, Dan Duddy. Hiya, Dan. Hey, Tom. You got the big reading uh, this uh, weekend, right? Yeah. Yes, we do. This is uh, yeah, it's, it, where you it's, prove your medal when you're staying in the pews at the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's... Uh, I remember when I was a kid, you know, it seemed like forever, you know, but we were excited as, as little kids to have, go home with the palms in our hands, you know? Yeah, and then Typically. smack each other, right? Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah, not in the pews. Not in the pews. Though. Oh, no, no, no. No. Yeah. I'm, we used to get them, I think, uh, before Mass. Now now they now they hit them out after Mass. But I, I remember, uh, yeah. Well, you know why, right? No. Well, just think of a reason that, you know, from our fallen I mean, if, nature. Like, they used to give out uh, ashes before, and then people would scram. Oh, yeah, yeah, the A&P. The there A&P you go. Ashes and palms. That's it. Get, get, the, get the ashes and scoot. Oh, I see, yeah, so the palm people would be would be out of there. You hear yeah. the tires squealing? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, uh, well... Uh, we're only going to get into uh, the first part of the uh, of Sunday's readings. Uh, the procession, really, into Jerusalem is incredibly important to understand this uh, this part. I mean, we have a sense of the other parts. We we can identify with the suffering, the betrayal of Ju- by Judas, and the courtroom scene in front of the uh, Jewish elders and whatnot. Uh, we just intuitively know about how horrible it is for the Jesus suffering, the torture, the humiliation. So we can really get a sense of that uh, without too much digging. But the procession is very, very important. And it's a it's part that I in my experience, a lot of people don't don't fully grasp. Do you uh, want Say whatever you want, and then uh, if you, would you uh, read that for us? Yeah, sure. Well, you have my attention there, Rabbi. I'm looking forward <laughs> to hearing what you have to say about about this first part, uh, because I too, I think, like, well, maybe I shouldn't speak for all of us, but I think we find ourselves affectively, a f s, affectively pouring ourselves into the passion. Uh, yes. Of, Great of, point. Of Christ. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what we remember most. But yeah, so once again, I, I look forward to uh, diving into this with you as we head toward the Passion. I'm gonna, I'll read it. Okay. And this is from Matthew 21, 1 through 11, at the procession with palms. And it's from the, from the USCCB uh, site. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. If anyone should say anything to you, reply. The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so, so that had what been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. And that goes like this in italics in the writing. Say to daughter Zion, behold... Your king comes to you, meek, and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt, and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees, and strode them on the road. The crowds preceding him, and those following him, crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Mm. The great pronouncement there at the end. And so, Coach, I, I was thinking about you as I was thinking about this passage mm-hmm. and just meditating on it. And I'm picturing you're going into the football stadium and there's, I don't mm-hmm. know, pick, pick a number. There's a thousand people, five thousand people, whatever. Okay. Uh, and the roar goes up when they see you. Yes. Seriously, I mean the roar that goes up. So you can, you know, whatever. I don't know. It'd have to be a real big stadium with a lot of people for uh, with, with football. But I, you know, I can see like indoor. If you're in a, at a maybe a basketball game or whatever it is, though, really, somebody appears and you rumors gone around and you you uh, you have great expectations, to borrow a phrase, and then this person appears. So there's allusions to, uh, when you read various passages, to the Old Testament, which by now, ladies and gentlemen, should be apparent to each one of you and uh, to us that the Jews didn't have, there was no such thing as a New Testament then. They were sacred scriptures. And they were Jewish, the Hebrew scriptures. And in certain environments, you refer to them. You don't say the Old Testament, you say uh, the Hebrew scriptures. And so that's what they would quote. I mean, that's what they would refer to. And that's what they would think of because they would think of the prophets. What did the prophets prophesy? And the whole thing, we talked about at our retreat this past weekend at Discovery House. We talked a lot about... Isaiah, because we were doing, the retreat was on the Song of the Suffering Servant. Well, by now, everybody in our audience, and long before now, they imagine they learned one day who this, who that suffering servant was. But they didn't know back then in Isaiah's time. And Isaiah is dealing with the collapse of, uh, you know, wars and, and constant conflict. And they're hoping for unification by a great leader and um, and so that's what a lot of uh, Isaiah uh, talks about. But as we learned by st- by studying and discussing some of the most of those discussions, very lively at our retreat, that there was talk about a servant, talk about a servant. There are four songs of the servant in Isaiah, and then you get to the last one, number four, and all of a sudden it's the suffering servant, right? And that's a whole different meaning to who this servant's going to be. And so when we think of this procession into Jerusalem, we know we've talked about various references to Jesus going into Jerusalem, Jesus knowing, because he had been attempted to be stoned before this, and other threats, and Thomas says, don't go in because you're going to get murdered, and then he says, all right, we're going to go with you. Uh, But they know, so they know, something's going on. And and Jesus told them, you know, he told them that essentially he got to the point where he said, I'm going to, I will be killed. Uh, All right, so, you know, they go, he gives them the instructions. uh, uh, It's an interesting little thing here with Matthew, because for the longest time, Matthew was thought to be a Jew speaking to the Jews, that, that like the Matthew's gospel is geared more to the Jews. It's the one that's most geared to the Jews. But it was thought that Matthew was a Jew. Now there's some groups that say, well, maybe he's maybe he was a Gentile, because there's a re- reference here to an ass and a cult. And in usually in Hebrew literature, there's a repetition for an emphasis. Uh, but. You know, it, and it refers to, it says here, they brought the ass and the cult and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. Well, how can you sit, sit, sit upon both? So that's a, and these are things that, this sentence right here that I just read, hey, he sat upon them. People would read that, and without an understanding of the way Hebrew literature is written, the, the way, uh, looking at, okay, from a Christian perspective, we'll say the Old Testament, looking at how the Old Testament ties in with the New, which it does to a large extent, they would think of that and say, ah, this can't be true. Nobody can sit on two animals, but they don't understand. So anyway, but 
but what that means, my point is that Matthew, if he were a Jew, he would know that, and he wouldn't have put sat upon them. So that's why a lot of there's a lot of emphasis on thinking that he he's a Gentile. Uh, so anyway, behold, your king comes to you. You know they talk about that. <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, he says, say to say to daughter Zion. Well, you know, we had uh, we had a retreat. Uh, actually, it was last year, last uh, our last Lenten retreat, Sons of the Father at Discovery House, and we it was we emphasis was on Zion. You know, who what is Zion? Zion is your that's your holiest place, right? Because that's the holiest site, and that's the the Jerusalem, and that's the the holy city. Uh, David David's place is is Mount Zion, so. Everything here is leading up to the next line. Behold, your king comes to you. But a lot of people didn't know or they didn't remember the next line. Meek and riding on an ass. So, and you, you, when they talk about the, the, they laid their cloaks over them. I mean, that's that's like a a, 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 a homage, or some people would say a homage, a homage, for you know a great leader. Boy, how disappointed. And this is where I was going with the crowd. And you're thinking a king is coming, and he's going to free you from the Romans and the oppression from the laws of the Torah. That is especially, uh, and, and there's passages in sacred script in the gospel uh, about you know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. A lot of that was directed at the oppressive actions by the Pharisees, the Pharisaic leaders, that you got to you got to remember 500 laws every day, and that's how you, it's, it's so oppressive. And if you don't, you get a penalty and, and whatnot. Okay, so the big, you know, the king, king comes in, and wow, Hosanna in the highest. You know, it's... Uh, yeah. Hosanna, you know, just it's an it's an emphasis, you know, you, especially if you repeated it again, you know, it's you know the military leader. It's not it's not who they were expecting, you know. It's like because it, they they know Isaiah and they, for example, Isaiah sixty two, uh, the Lord is proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see your Savior comes. Exclamation point is got in there. So. Isaiah is yelling this. See, his reward is w- is with him, his recompense before him. You know, you, on the first day, this, this is right around the Feast of the Tabernacles, there was a tie-in with that. And on the first day, you should gather fruit of the majestic trees, branches of palms. That's all for, you know, that's a great celebration. And then, what do they see? <laughs> they see their king, or their supposed king, coming in on a donkey, a mule, an ass. Mm. So, wow! And that's well just done. that's just part of it. I mean, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, it's uh, sure. That's huge. Never. That is huge. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they are expecting a king. They're expecting someone like David, and you know, we've talked about that—a political leader, a military leader. And, you know, in the mold of David, <laughs> and, and you know, Christ is well. We'll say Jesus at the time. I mean, he's he comes in in such a in such a humble way. You know, you we talked about hummus. You know, hum, uh, humility, humble. That, <laughs> that's not what the king. We don't have we don't have a president of the United States coming in on a, uh, on an ass. Yeah. You know. So it's uh, yeah. What a disappointment well, for a lot of them. Well, yeah, and going into my. The segment of my my Lenten exercises with Ignatius, you you brought me here, and we're just going to cross the road a little bit and go toward the Passion uh, a little bit, as you just did, regarding the disappointment of the military leader, you know, the descendant of David, that they were expecting or hoping for so much political unrest, and really a lot of complications among the people, those that really loved him for his works and for his word and for his comfort and you know, the, actually the uh, the reading from the prophet Isaiah, the reading that follows this shows the beauty of our Lord in the, in the prophecy of the Messiah to come. But the, the, uh, the point is that he, and, and once again, Ignatius sheds great light on this. When he went into his beginning his passion with the Garden of Gethsemane, having given his friends the greatest gift of all, the Eucharist, 
and then going into Gethsemane and beginning once again his immense suffering in the areas of liberty, having his liberty completely taken away from him, having been turned over by a friend in in Judas and his three captains, as I like to say from a football standpoint, sleeping under a tree and the Sanhedrin coming and shackling him and taking him away and then bringing him before all these people who had become like politically effective too and turned against him, many of them, even though having seen his works, he was no longer the king that they were expecting and he, he, he became anything but. Once again, his liberty completely gone. Uh, friends completely betrayed him, left him out of fear. Peter denied him three times, just as our Lord said he would. Uh, his reputation was completely shattered. Here's a, here's here's the man that that saved people from their own their own death, and Lazarus raising him from the dead. And that reputation hitting the streets, a sight to the blind, and here he is standing there in a white robe, which me, meant madman in front of Herod, and completely drained of liberty, friendship, reputation, his honor, and it's hard to. As Ignatius wants us to, it's really, really difficult to go into the visualization and the the uh, the practice of the five senses when it comes to his physical, his body, his physical suffering. And yeah, so here is this letdown of this military king now becoming anything but the appearance of this military leader, save, savior, you know, in that realm, mm-hmm. earthly realm. And... Uh, that's a good choice of words, yeah. realm. Yeah, and so back to, let's go into the present, because that's where God is, and that's where we're begged to go to. And go to the retreat, go to the hearts of man, 2023, 10 guys. That was a very provoking retreat, because you had brought Isaiah to us, and of course the Lord is in us, and you pointed several times to crucifixes. And there we have Isaiah and the, the, the story of the servant you know, the, uh, the suffering servant and looking at the foreshadowing to the crucifix and it stirred the room immensely in so many complicating but yet simple ways. So there is the Holy Spirit and the immense energy that comes from the very scene of Palm Sunday riding in to Jerusalem, knowing what he's facing, knowing that he's going to really not lose his friends. He understands I'm going to forgive him. He gave that sweet look to Peter in one of his most, most immense, darkest times to the point where Peter cried and ran away because he could not stand being the man that he was in light of the sweetness of our Lord. As so many things happened during, during the Passion that he showed us how to model suffering. So it's, uh, it's really cool. It's really cool that you... You know, you kind of pushed us the wrong word, but had us read this, because I think to shed light on the procession with palms is something that is not done very often. I think we, we have a tendency to go straight to the passion. And uh, great point. well yeah. done. Well yeah. done. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, that's a great point. Necessary. We go yeah. right to the passion. It's interesting because you wonder whether you know there was a lot of illiteracy uh, you know, for the longest time. I mean, but but having said that, let me quickly add that people learned it was such an oral for for millennia in human history. It was an oral tradition, and our ears were trained a certain way that were that they are that are they are not in a way that they are not trained today, and that's a little bit of a loss. So in, in Isaiah, I don't know how the, the those who learned or heard from the prophet Isaiah and those who heard about the, what the prophet Isaiah is, because that was more likely, you know, there's only so many people one person can reach, but then the word spreads, of course. And so for the first four uh, lines of this prophecy, it's all about you. You could come to the conclusion of David as a military leader. But then the last two lines, this is where it's a little confusing. Uh, uh, humbling riding on a donkey. I don't know whether they just blew past that, you know, a lot of people who are, who are listening, or they just don't remember. Who knows? Because that was centuries before Jesus' time. So the people who are hearing about these great works this man is doing, I mean, including resurrection, for crying out loud, 
Uh, you know, they're thinking this is even better than what we learned about uh, uh, David. And we haven't heard anything in terms of sin uh, as with David, uh, with this guy. So wow, has perfection visited us? You know, so you got to think if they're think, expecting a military leader, then they're, they're expecting a war horse. Oh, yeah. It's a whole new level and definition of perfection that the Lord Jesus Christ brought to the world in Jerusalem. And, and if not for Christ, we wouldn't know that perfection today. Who else would have done it? I mean, he, he is the one, the only, the last prophet, uh, you know, and, and, and yet the, it, it just amazes me that our Jewish brothers and sisters just, you know, uh, have looked beyond him and continue to do so. I mean, here, here we are with the hearts changed, the created hearts of God the Father in heaven, completely changed by Jesus Christ the world over it changed completely as you just shed light on that we were we were resting our hearts on a military icon was going to come mm. and, walk. and and here we have instead a whole new level of perfection and across the world for 2000 years the, the term has been used not before christ obviously but well, that's very Christ-like. That's very Christian of you. Those, those are, those are Christ-like virtues that you have. Even by the unfaithed, recognize the virtues of Jesus Christ that that were not prevalent or celebrated before Christ. Yeah, you know, the only <laughs> you made me think in, in of this in terms of perfection, Tom. In terms of yeah. perfection. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you made me think of. Uh, how because Christianity obviously has a massive impact on the culture, and yeah, we generally tied it in with the West, and even though it was an African, uh, it had an African Middle East slash uh, start, uh, but now with the growth, there's much more explosive. There's explosive growth in Africa and Asia of Christianity and and including Catholicism, of course, uh, than in the West. So things have flipped. You know, it's it, it's like. You, when they talk about, for example, in Matthew twenty one ten, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, and 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 that you know, so they make the 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 writer Matthew is making the point, and because he says, and who is like they are saying, who is this, you know, and they were shaken, uh, you know, it's like it's the if six verses later. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked. Rocks were split. Uh, when this impact on, on, on the world, you have two ways of saying our Lord's name. And one is in, in just awe. Or, you know, thanks. Or if you're in great distress, you know, you'll say the name Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's on the other hand, the other side of that coin, you've got people who will blaspheme by using that as a curse. And I've heard and I am sure you have, I've heard people throw an adjective in between the names Jesus and Christ. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know. A horrible. I, 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 and yeah. it's interesting that you don't hear anybody use the name Muhammad in either way. Mm. You don't hear them say you might hear them say Holy Moses, but I haven't heard that in decades. <laughs> All right, yeah. but something about Jesus, the cross, the cross, it, it's it's like the dividing line, and oh, Jesus makes demands. He's ever present. He's ever present in those that he's supposedly not present in. You know, it's you know if if we can all just step back and see the truth and get out of the way of the truth, you know, if we can all step back eons back and are have incredible vision to see the truth we we will see him we will see him standing there all of us will and we get in we get in in our way and, and our own way and some of it's generational and some of it is just horrifying uh because time moves on how we so many have their their false gods and we have to watch for ourselves as well, as you said. What is your Mount Zion? You know, we always are being attacked. And you, you're sin, using the pronoun sins. "we," we, we, and you're right. And that's what we talked about at the retreat. We are the body of Christ. 
We each yeah. are a part. Uh, we each are part of that body. We're not meant to do it alone. We are Amen. meant. I'm no. not meant to help you. You're meant to help me. We're meant to help each other. Yeah. You know, uh, it's the, the community. Two or more are gathered. There he, there our Lord is, and there Satan is not. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Danny. Have a good uh, Palm Sunday to you and to our listeners. Uh, What's coming up next? Uh, stay tuned, please, folks, for The Angelus and Your Prayer Intentions with Peter and Jimmy. All right. Palm Sunday coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Get uh, This is uh, not an endurance test. This is uh, just the joy. It's the, you're going to do the Hosanna. You know who you're expecting, who we are expecting. You have a little bit more of the background of it and the significance of it. This is a king. God bless you, Danny. God bless you, Tommy. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to The 13th Apostle with Dan Duddy and Tom Caffrey. For more information on Dan, visit his website at www.danduddy.com or email dcduddy at gmail.com. Tom's website is faithpilgrims.com or email trcaffrey at faithpilgrims.com. How about you? Will you be The 13th Apostle?